So I'm going to start playing around with this Datron 1062 AutoCal digital multimeter. Now this is one I picked up and showed you in a mailbag recently and it had issues where apparently it's well it's been used as a parts unit and a board swap situation going on. So this last got some 40 balls in there, at least one. Done a bit of research on what boards are missing, there's some spaces in there where there's no board. Those turn out to be nothing important, that's fine, it's just like um, it's an option which isn't installed, which is the current sensing board. So that's not there, probably never installed in the first place. I need to sort out a few things on this. Well, the first thing I need to do is change the voltage on this to go to 240 volts from 115, wherever it's set to currently. So I need to do that before I accidentally blow it up or something. So that's the first thing I'll do is go and change the voltage and we'll dig around a bit more and see what else we can come up with. Right, so I pulled the covers off. A couple of little details on the front panel here. It's got this trim, the actual face here. It's got this actual metal plate there and it's got this sticker over the front. It's actually detaching just here. So I think I need to do something about sticking that back down again before it gets damaged. Um, the rest of it seems alright, it just seems to be just in at one spot, but it is very flimsy trim anyway. It relies on being held in place by the top and bottom cases. So that's that part. So it's got a few issues. That's just one of many. <laughs> we'll work through them one at a time. So there's supposed to be jumper link for voltage setting. So just there are the links. So those Two links there got to be taken out and got to be bridged across instead. That'd be what I need to change. That's right where I expect it to be is by the transformer. So I'll do that first so it's at least on 240 volts then. I can forget about worrying about accidentally blowing it up. It's always a thing that's in my mind, oh, you know, worrying about if I get it wrong. <laughs> I try not to get it wrong, but so we'll do that. And then I think the next stage would be trying to measure some voltages and stuff like that and checking for ripple on the power supplies. The AC board, the relay is jittering. Power up testing. Plug that in. Relay is flicking. Okay, why is that relay flicking? But we do at least have a display. Display's good. Yay, that's a win. Yeah, something's going over here. Hmm, he's been played with. Be marked. Suspicious. Is it relay two? I think it is. Is that one at the back there? It's switching on off rapidly. I'm suspecting it's power supply problems anyway. I'll start with that because that's usually the best place to start with things. So first thing, get the links done. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff too. Don't always forget to say that at the beginning. You know, if you're interested in test gear repairs or electronic repairs, make sure you do that so you don't miss out on my future videos. Also, if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can also check out my Patreon links down below too. I'm also on Library. Go check out my Library channel, obry.tv. I've got a link down below in the description for that as well. I'm trying to build that channel audience up, so if you're interested in following me on there too, then please do. So I'll turn to YouTube. Right, let's get on with this. So what I'm going to attempt to do is get in there with my tweezers and lift the links and take one link out and just move it around, just basically lift one end of one link and bridge it across. Because that's supposed to be is either one link across or one link up and down, or two links up and down. Remove one link completely and then spin the other one around. That's what I need to do. So let's see if I can do this without having my arm or my soldering iron in the way. Maybe my stomach, I'm not quite sure which one will be in the way first. Could be any one. So I think I'll pull the left one out. It's a pretty rigid link as well. There we go, that's that link out. Okay, there's a link out from there. Spin it around. And hopefully it'll reach the other hole. I think it probably will. In fact, I'll get some better tweezers. Better tweezers, probably a good plan. Let's get some fresh solder on this because this is being a real pain. And yes, I know my hands in the way. <laughs> there you go, let's, let's try this way. Right, it's done. So it should now be on 240 volts instead of 115. That took way longer than I should have done. This is why I like those little plug-in cards or little things like that, rather than having to solder around jumpers, you know, it's a bit of a pain. There's much better ways of doing it, but anyway. I suppose it's not something you have to change very often, it's just, you know, once it's built, it's done. This one's got a thing marked on the back saying made in USA. It's got a little plate on the back instead of made in the UK, which I found interesting. Anyway, this is dated 1986 over here. The chip's 85, the chip's 84, but I've seen 85 and some of the other chips are, but this one says 1986. So I think that's the year of this is 1986. 
how it makes it 34 years old thereabouts is that say 22nd of april so yeah 34 years old exactly actually yeah anyway let's see if i can resurrect it so i've just done a bit of esr checking on the caps in the back here on the main power supply and i'm getting some really odd values in a couple of them so i Probably going to recap all the back end of the power supply there, and also have some other caps just down here on the edge of this board. Now, a couple of them actually measure really strangely, they're really high ESRs, like 90 ohms kind of thing. So, I'll probably have to recap all the electrolytics on this board as well. And all axial caps, which is a bit of a pain, a bit harder to get and a bit more expensive, but yeah, you know, you can always make do, you can just use an, a radial leader type, and uh, sometimes you can stretch leads far enough to get one into the other, but. Depends on the layout on the board and that sort of stuff. I think I should power it up next and see what happens. Just confirm what I've done works. And I think after that I'll look at putting a battery in. Because not having a battery could potentially cause all kinds of weird issues. I don't know, but when it's powered up it probably shouldn't matter. Because the battery circuitry on this, it goes through a diode just over here. Yeah, let me try and get in focus for you. Right, so it goes through a diode over here. Just there behind this transistor. And there's another diode in parallel with it. So the battery goes through this way. And that's, uh, I don't know what voltage it's supposed to be. I've got no idea. I haven't found a reference for that yet. But it goes to a diode, which then goes to it in parallel with another diode, which I believe it is a 5 volt supply. So I think it's got 5 volts going to the circuitry. And the diode's obviously there to separate the supply so you don't get a backflow back into the battery to charge it up because you don't want that. So I think I can probably use anything up to 5 volts because it's on a 5 volt rail, effectively. Well, 4.4, whatever, you know. 4 volt rail, let's call it 4 volts. So I think I could use anything up to 4 volts quite happily. So I could potentially use an 18650 or something like that. And I don't know about stopping it in this holder, but you know, I could do something like that and replace this with a more modern battery. I don't know what it'd be like for shelf life though, you know, I, mean, I could use that to recharge. I could then take the diode out and recharge the 18650. Maybe put a charge circuitry in it or something like that, I don't know. Single cell BMS. I mean, I do actually have some single cell BMS modules. Could do that. Or I could just try and get a proper lithium cell that goes in here. I'm assuming this is lithium cell. I've got no information about it yet. I mean, it'll be in the manual somewhere. Else I haven't found it. I do have some batteries from uh, Apple computers. I used to use a little 3.6 volt lithium cell. And I've got some brand new ones. I've had them for years. But they might still be okay. I've just got to find them. I think I know where they are. And that will probably fit in this battery holder. And if that's the case, I might just solder it on and use that. I mean, the memory's already gone. I've got nothing to lose, but yeah. So here we go. It's one of these batteries. I've had these for... I don't know probably six years <laughs> I've still got more so let's see if it's actually looking any good or not so it's a 3.6 volt lithium half AA prem cell it looks like it's basically the right one apart from not having any solder tags on the ends so let's measure the voltage see if it works oh look at that completely flat well that's not what I wanted to see is it nah <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> Perfect time to have something like this on hand. And it doesn't work. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, I've had these for a long time. It's probably... It might even be 10 years. I mean, it's been a while. It don't last forever. Yeah. No good. Oh, well. Plan B. Let's just plug it in, power it up, see what happens as it is. Now I've got high voltage going in. What could happen is the filters inside here, because these are filtered usually. I don't know if it actually is or not. It's a really rigid boot on there. It might be a connector, it might be filtering, I don't know. What can happen is when you put a high voltage into one of these things after they've never had one, they can blow. So I'm going to see if I can capture anything. So let's wind the power up. Probably can't see it on camera because I'm just off shot. There's that relay. This is turn the power off probably until I get the voltage up. Let's get uh, 230 volts, that'll do. I'm using my Variac on the side here. So that's right. Let's turn the power on again. So yes. <sighs> Glitchy. So what I'm actually tempted to do is disconnect the AC board. Well, at least it won't be damaging the relay while I'm working on it. So let's just look at that. Let's unplug this connector here. This is the AC. Right, I can hear buzzing. Now the relay is not clicking, I can hear buzzing. It's that transformer. Transformer's buzzing a little bit, which is interesting. I need to check these caps and stuff like that and see what's going on there. Use this meter for the time being. 
And let's just see what we get off these. So I'm going to do DC measurements first, then I'll go around and do AC measurements in case there's any AC issues at the same time. So you've got 24 volts on that cap. Underneath it. Definitely got some odour coming from this thing too. Alright, so we've got another cap over here which I'm going to try and get onto. 240 volts on that cap. 240. A strange value to get on a cap. Hmm. So I've got another cap hazard down there, which I'm going to have trouble getting onto. At least getting onto from this side. We'll do AC measurements now, see if we get any ripple on these. It gives an idea at least. I was looking alright. Oh, can I see smoke? I can see smoke. There's definitely smoke. Transformer's getting hot. Well, that's not a good sign, is it? Hmm. I've turned the power off, that's why I don't mind touching it now. Yeah. Well, this is going to be fun, isn't it? <sighs> now what? Well, I flipped it over. I've uh, left it to cool down a little bit. It's still barely warm. I flipped it over. I'm going to do some voltage measurements on this last rail and see what we get in there on that capacitor. I'm mindful that it could be a rail loading it down. It could be a short somewhere, which is then overloading transformer. It's possible. I didn't actually notice what Mahoppy was saying as far as current goes. Let's actually spin this around a little bit. And I'll measure this capacitor here, which is supposed to be feeding the 5 volt rail with the infamous LM309, which can be a problem apparently. And we'll see what we get with that. I'll do AC measurement first and I'll do DC. But as this transformer is making a bit of a noise, I'm not going to do it for very long. It's obviously got a problem. Current draw. Drawing 100 watts. 100 watts? Yeah, okay, that's not good. Let's try and get on here and on here without shorting anything. Nothing there as far as AC goes. Let's check the AC. Nine volts across that capacitor. So that actually looks fairly normal. I'm still surprised about it being 100 watts though. That seems excessive. Don't think I haven't changed the fuse. So I've still got the original 115 volt fuse in there. Right, it's something you should always do. I tend to forget to mention it a lot in videos. Often I will go back later on and actually change the fuse. I haven't changed this one yet. Which means you can draw potentially twice the current. Let's just have a look at something here. What's this thing say? 160 milliamps to 230. Power rating is 30 VA. What the hell does that equate to? So that is drawing excessive current. The question is why? So what I've done is I've unplugged the output windings of the transformer because I need to eliminate whether it's a componentry problem or power supply problem or whether it's a transformer itself which is causing the problem. So I've removed the output windings, at least I think there's the output windings, I guess we'll find out. Let's turn the power on and see if it behaves differently. There's no buzzing anymore. And no power draw whatsoever. Nothing. That might be primary side. Okay, now I've unplugged the other side instead. We'll try that again. I can hear buzzing, and we're using 90 odd watts. Hmm, I need to figure out what each ones of these are and um, determine what that actually means. It could be a bad transformer, that'd be bad. I also unplugged J5, which is another output. It's got shared connections to some of these connectors, so it's a bit hard to tell in, determine which one's which, but J5 is one of the outputs, so we'll try disconnecting that one, see if that still have loads. I can hear it buzzing, still 100 watts. So it's not J5 which is causing the problem. Mm. If you look in the back here, you can see you've got some bridge rectifiers, there's two of them here. And this one here is very discoloured, looks like maybe resoldered, but it could just be getting hot. And this one's maybe looking a bit dodgy too, it's got some potentially bad joints. That could be a sign, I've seen this kind of thing before, we've got a hot bridge rectifier, where it's either shorted out or the circuitry it provides power to is shorted out. So I'm suspicious about that one there and see where that goes to. Alright, so I just removed W1, which is the bridge rectifier which is for the 180 volt rail. That's why I was measuring at 240 volts before because that capacitor, that'd be that rail there. It gives me some kind of confidence that something's working at least, but that was 
looked like it's been getting hot, you can see it's all charred as well. So I've removed it, and let's power it up and see what happens. I've already got things plugged in, ready to go. Let's just see what happens. Let's find out. Right, you ready? Ah, oh, that's better. 15 watts, and the noise is gone. So yes, so at least I know now which power rail is one that's playing up. It's that one. So that's narrowed it down quite a bit. Let's measure the diode bridge and actually see what's going on here. See if there's a bad bridge or if it's a main power supply rail. Often it's the rectifier which is the problem. So we'll see. So we've got the AC input on the sides there and the positive and negative there. All right, so it's basically four diodes inside a single package. That's all it is. So you can use diode mode on your meter to test it. So I'm going to go to, this is one of the AC connections. Check that way. 0.4, OK. Nothing, that's OK. Go to your connection over the other side. Short. Hmm. Measure that one. Open. Shouldn't be getting a short there. Hold on, let's reverse the probes. Short. Uh -huh. Got a blown diode. That's 400, as it should be. So yes, this diode goes between these two connections and is shorted out. That's why it's trying to put DC back into the AC circuitry, which is an overloading transformer. So I need a new bridge. So I've had a little look around, and apparently it's a 400 volt, 1.5 amp diode bridge. Well, bridge rectifier, when you call it, right? All right, so I managed to find another diode bridge. I've only got one of these left, so I've actually just ordered some more. This is a 2W10. So this one's actually rated at 1000 volts at 2 amps. It's actually slightly better spec than the original. It's in my parts drawer, but it tests fine. I've just done a diode test on it, it all looks all right. So I'm gonna put this one in. So I just probed on this just now, just to verify the pin out, just to make sure it definitely goes back in the correct way in case someone's taken out and put it back in wrong or something, who knows. So I've just measured that con connection there and this one here are the AC connections, which means these two are the DC connections. Obviously I've got to make sure I get those right around too, otherwise it would be a bit of a problem. So what I think I'll do is to verify the DC connections is I'll just um, probe one of the pins and then go to the capacitor because that will determine the polarity. Just make sure I get the correct polarity on it. So I believe the top pin here is the positive. So let's find the cap. There's a positive there. Yep, there we go. And that should be negative. Go to the negative side. Yep, that's fine. So that's correct. Polarity is confirmed. Easy as that. Okay, I've got the bridge rectifier installed. Moment of truth. Actually, one last check. Make sure I've definitely got the polarity right. Yep, that looks okay. And let's turn the power on, see what happens. Watch the watt meter over here. No buzzing, 19 watts. That's that problem fixed. Now we can move on. And also, since doing that, the display's actually got a lot brighter too. Let's help that too. Obviously, it's only half being rectified. So, hmm, that's an improvement.